W here. Let's load up some of these 105 grain lees that I cast up yesterday. Very nice looking bullet. Yeah, and I think a good platform for him is 38 Special. Sorry for the shadows. We're over on the far side of my bench. And although I got a light right here, I don't have really good light overhead. It's kind of off to the side. So to make everybody at YouTube happy, this is not a complete process. I've omitted the first steps. These are sized, primed, and flared cases. I didn't show you that part, so this is not a complete reloading session. But I'm using Herco powder because I like it. I've had really good luck with it with cast bullets. And it's a nice uh, it's a nice powder that doesn't see a lot of use. So I'm not using up a popular powder. So being flared, I seeded the powder. I, uh, I charged it with powder and I pushed the bullet on. And you can see it there. The dies are all set up. This is the Lee... This is the value line turret press. Uh, it works exactly the same as the regular for, for uh, hole turret. It's just a little bit thinner here. It's got a smaller ram, but the operation is, is identical. And I've got this set up with a factory crimp die from Lee and then a mishmash of dies. I got an RCBS sizer. I've got a Lyman M die that we use to flare it. This is another RCBS with a Lee nut on it for seating, but this is only a 357 die, so I cannot crimp with it. So we got a standalone crimper over here. And I like to run mine without the shaft, without the auto index, because I like to manipulate it myself. And there's a finished case. This is PPU brass with a Winchester primer. So let's do another one. First step. Break that edge. Not super important with a jacketed bullet, but it makes a big difference with a cast bullet. It, uh, that little bit of shaving that you might get with that edge rounded over, you don't get it at all. So there we are. I got my light set up here so I can see. Powder charge is in there. I got the bullet. We're gonna seat the bullet in. It goes in pretty nice and square with the M-Die because it the way the M-Die works is it makes a little shoulder there, a little pocket. So you just seat the seat the bullet in and it goes right to where it's supposed to be. Down to the bottom, seat it to the crimp groove, turn it one rotation, one indentation, crimp it, all done, turn it back over. There we have it again. One more. Let me zoom in for you here. Just a nice crimp. Not super heavy, just enough to, to lock it in there. And again, PPU brass, or is that, that's BHA, I'm sorry, BHA, I can see it better through the camera than I could with my glasses, <laughs> all right, back you off, we're going to break this edge with our airplane tool, our spaceship deburring tool, just a little bit, just enough. Just enough that it, it's not so sharp. We charge it with powder with our little dandy powder throw. Another thing I really like, you can't see it, it's out of your view. I'll pull it down here after we seat this bullet and I'll show it to you. All right, we indexed it back to the cedar, indexed it to crimp, back to cedar. There's another one done. Let me show you this little dandy. This is an older little dandy. All right, we're zoomed out. This is an older little dandy. The older ones had these hexagon shape to the body, but it's got barrels and you buy these separate and they slide in. They got one screw here to holds them in. This silver thing is a knob that's, that's uh, added after the fact. And uh, what it does is they got numbers on the end and that corresponds to a charge that they throw. There's just a pocket drilled in them. So you spin it over and spin it back. So it, it's got powder in it, it tips over and dumps the powder out the bottom and then tips back up and scoops up powder again. 
just a simple thing. This is something that a, a friend, a guy I know made up. It just holds the powder down on top in one place. It helps with the consistency. It's got some weight to it. So we're going to take another case, do the same thing again. Just going to break the edge on it up here and charge it with powder. One time over and back, we're full of powder. Grab a bullet, set it right in the top. Again, it's easy to make it square because of the way the because of the way the die is designed. Sits in there really square and nice and true. Seat it to depth, no no shaving. We're right at the top of the grease of the uh, crimp groove, right where I want to be. Because when you crimp it, it drops in behind, gives you a nice crimp. And we just got a couple more here. So this, this load ought to be, well, you know, I don't know how fast it's going to be because uh, I've never done 110 grain bullets. But I would imagine it's going to be shy of a thousand feet per second, even with 105. And I'll probably shoot these in the single action because uh, my uh, I only have one double action, and it's an eight-inch barreled Colt, and it's sighted for for hunt heavy hunting loads, where the single actions are uh, a little more friendly to whatever you want to shoot in them. And again, here's a. Beginner tips when you're loading, do not have anything on your bench for powder or primers or bullets other than what you're loading. So what you see over here, I'll zoom over a little bit. There's our can of Herco powder. And it's actually important to have that out on your bench if that's the powder you're using because when you put it in the dispenser, there's no label on it. So you really don't know what's in your dispenser unless you know what you put in there. So leave your can of powder right there next to your dispenser. Get your box of bullets. Leave it right here. I've got a few of them open here that I can pull from. I know what I got. It says right there what I need, what I have. I've got nothing else on the bench open for powder or primers. Um, I've actually got the primers put away because we're all primed and there's no reason to have primers out anymore. So we just cut the burr off the inside of that case. Not really a burr, we just broke the edge. Made sure we didn't have a problem scraping powder coat. Grab a bullet, set the bullet in the case, nice and square and true. We didn't rotate back, so we'll index it back to the seating. Rotate it over to the crimp. There's a little detents if you hear it there. It stops at that little detent right where we want it to. So we know everything is aligned. Just break that edge. Charge. Air bullet. This is just really pleasant, easy reloading. No big rush. No distractions. I got a little radio playing because I like to have a sound. I don't like silence. I've got a really bad ear that whistles like crazy and it drives me nuts if I'm in silence. So that's why you always hear a radio playing in my videos. All right, seat one, crimp one. And we've got one more to do. I just did 20. What you see over there is a dummy. You should always load a dummy to set up your dies with a brand new bullet. This is just a case, no primer, no, primer, no powder. And it just gives me an overall length. It's a good place to use your culls. I'll show you that one. That's a cull bullet. It's got a little uh, a little fold in the driving band. All right, seat it, crimp it. There we go. There's 20 bullets. And here is this bullet. The reason I used it is because it's got a. See it there? Got a fold in the driving band. It would probably shoot okay, but it's a perfect candidate for a dummy round. And there we go.
There's 20 38 specials. A little bit of my yapping in 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions if you have any. God bless everybody. CW out.